Hey gun people, I had a couple of uh, requests for some more knots on repelling. So I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna go over the Prusik knot, the water knot, and the safety knot. So we'll do those three videos here. Uh, what you're seeing right there is a little square knot that I just use as a tie off. I wanted to have a rope stretch across that I could use. So basically, this isn't really a secure line. I just kind of flipped that around and looped it around there connected those two ropes with a square knot and then used a bowling knot to make a loop on that end and tie it around there. Now in my other video I talk about the bowling and the um, figure eight for your tie off points. I also talk about the butterfly and I might be doing those on some things. I also put out a few uh, different D-rings and webbings that I might be uh, going over and discussing um, so, um, because these knots will work with the webbing also. So let me focus in on this uh, knot right there and I'm going to try to keep most of my knot stuff right in that area. This thing doesn't seem to be focusing. I was having this problem the other day. I'm going to go all the way in and all the way out. Let's see if I can't focus in on that knot. All right, that's not too bad. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. I'd rather it be about right there. It's not focusing as well. Try to focus in on something like that. Come on, Mr. Autofocus. I'll try to get maybe one of the horses. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's even closer. Let me try. <laughs> All right, close your eyes for a second till I get this focus thing worked out. All righty, that should be pretty good for the. Uh, we'll do the Prusik knot. So let me go over the Prusik knot and kind of what it is. Um, try to turn this this way so I can kind of maybe see whether I'm in or I'm out. Uh, I've got two ropes here that I'm, I'm just kind of, I've connected this with a water knot, so this is a kind of a water knot we're going to go over. I've just got a basic square knot here. Um, when you make a loop on a rope to where you have one loop, I'm going to have to move out a little bit. So when you make a loop for tying your Prusik knot, you, you, you need to have a loop. You can do it on a single rope and then make your loop afterwards. But if you have a complete loop, like this loop here is tied with a water knot. Let me go over the water knot real quick because it's a pretty simple knot. Water knot. Basically it's an overhand knot that you follow the other rope to. It's for connecting two pieces of webbing or two pieces of rope. So basically I have a rope here with two ends and I want to make them one. So what you do is you get just an overhand knot, a simple overhand knot, and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this rope around with this other rope. It's called a water knot. So I'm following this rope or your webbing. It's going to come up as it's tracing. It'll curve around here as it's tracing comes up around here, give me a little bit more distance here, comes up around tracing that knot and then this knot comes in behind them and it traces. So basically you have a double overhand knot when you tighten those two, that's called a water knot um, and it's for connecting two pieces of rope. Now you can do that with webbing. and it looks neater with webbing and it's pretty strong so whatever my webbing is if I have a straight piece of webbing and I want to connect these two to make me a loop for repelling or throwing off or doing a Prusik knot basically I do the same thing just do a simple overhanded knot there's my overhanded knot take the other end of my webbing and I basically just track where this came out it comes around it follows over, it loops this, 
and then it goes right back over and it comes out to where I have a double and then I tighten the two knots to where they look parallel and that is your water knot a, a pretty simple knot but it's pretty useful um, so again really quick I'll do it a little distance so you can kind of keep everything in view you get you get a piece of rope you tie an overhand knot just a simple one overhand knot and then you trace this piece of rope here nylon whatever it is and you just follow it so if it goes in here you follow it it wraps around I'm following it I'm following it I'm tracing it it comes back through and then I tighten them both up now what that gives me is now I have a loop that I can repel off of I can either throw this on something and hook a d-ring to I can wrap it around something and hook a d-ring to and it's basically just as strong as a a complete solid loop so that's your water knot obviously if you have a loop with webbing that's already sewn and stitched you don't need a water knot but if you have a straight piece of webbing then you'd make a water knot and it would make this <clears throat> so let me try to zoom back in on this knot I'm trying to see if you can see that if I ought to come maybe a little closer let's try that so I can get you right in there all right so now we're gonna do uh oh the doctor saw me out here he wants to get fed <laughs> Prusik knot Persic knot you hear it called different things I'm gonna tie it right here um, I'm gonna tie it I'll tie it first since these since this rope is connected with a water knot now I have a loop if I want to put a Prusik on this with a loop what you have to do is you come around the back and then you run your two ropes through it I forgot what this note is called or this knot is called but basically I'm just gonna loop it like this this is the start of my Prusik knot now I'm gonna do another loop and follow that around the same exact way coming back around making sure that's come to the center so now I have two loops there and then I'm gonna pull it out that loop there at the bottom and that's a bit that's a Prusik knot now the Prusik knot is kinda of backwards here because technically you're supposed to be able to see this side so this would be a more correct Prusik knot okay and the and what a Prusik knot does or Prusik knot is it's a sliding locking knot so when I put pressure and that's why I needed this rope here when I pull pressure this way on this knot it locks that rope up and now I can pull and it will hold me but then to loosen it I can either slide it come up here and slide it this way and then it'll lock there if I want to slide it down then it locks when it's got tension there pretty handy knot uh, it, it's used for different things we've used it as a safety line if we're repelling upside down if you're going down the side of a building and you're coming upside down to where you have you have your gun you're coming on top of a window and you're looking in the top of a window so you're actually facing down this is the knot that they'll use up top as a safety line because they're lowering you uh, so this is a Prusik knot tied with a loop I'll do it with a webbing also so you can kind of see it. it won't look as neat so this is a webbing it's a loop I'm gonna do it the same way coming down the middle I want to make sure this end ends up down here at the bottom or close to the bottom in between so I have my hook off so I have my bar there now I'm gonna wrap that around again come through that again and now I have two ropes on this side two on this side the bar goes across the both and now that's a Prusik with webbing same thing when I pull here it locks the rope I'm leaning I don't know if you can see me all the way here how much pressure I'm putting on there so when this thing locks I'm leaning all the way back and hopefully my knots are holding my square knots gonna hold my other knots gonna hold and now this 
Prusik knots hold me. And then to move it, kind of loosen up a little bit and I can slide it down. And then when I want to lock it again, it locks me in to where I'm not going anywhere. And then to loosen it up, you loosen it and you slide it back up. So that's how you tie the Prusik knot when you have a loop. If you have a single rope, which I will do this one, I will untie my little quick square knot. Everybody should know how to tie a square knot, quick square knot. You always go over with the same rope to tie your square knot. So if I'm tying a square knot and this rope goes over, when I loop this around, this is the rope that's got to go over this rope and you'll always end up with a square knot. Okay? If you don't do that and this rope went over and now I come behind and it goes like that, that's not a square knot and that knot will work its way loose. Okay, so whatever rope starts going on top, when it goes over, it has to go on top of that second rope, and then that'll be your square knot, and it always comes out to be a square knot. I did it that way, I'm gonna put this one on top now. This rope's on top, going over, it's on top. This rope's on top, it's going over, so it has to go on top, and I have my square knot. So now I have a loose rope, and I wanna tie a Prusik here. So let me see if I can zoom back in on that so you can kind of get a nice view on what I'm doing there. Alrighty. So now I'm going to be tying this right here. So when you want to do your, your pursing knot on an already existing rope, you take your end, you go over, and basically you do a loop. Just like that. So you're going away. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that loop, and this is going to be your bar. Remember that bar when we did the double? This bar right here? So you take this rope, and it comes across, and now you're going to loop this rope and bring the rope under the bar once, and under the bar twice. And then you can finish it. I call it finishing. Some people call it dressing. It's making the knot look neat. There's your two Prusik knots. This one's tied with a loop. This one's tied with two single ropes. Now, of course, I have two single ropes here. So, depending on what I want to do with this Prusik, if I want this to be a loop, I have to connect these two ropes. How can I connect them? I can connect them with a square knot. Okay, I can connect them with a water knot. Now I have a water knot, or I can connect them with a figure eight. And a figure eight knot I showed you before. I'll zoom out just a little bit so we got some working room here to stay in camera. Figure eight knot, I'm gonna tie a single figure eight knot. So there's my figure eight knot. Rope's coming out. Now I'm gonna take this rope that's coming out of the Prusik, and I'm going to trace it with this rope right here. So it's going to follow this rope. It's going to come down. It's going to wrap around that loop. It goes under this rope here. So I'm going to bring it under that rope there. Then it goes around the back. Goes around the back of that. I'm still tracing that single rope. Then it comes out the front with that rope right there. Then I'm gonna tighten it up and dress it. Finish it. And now I have a figure eight. And I have a Prusik. And I have this loop here. That if I wanna hang on, it locks into the rope and I can't go anywhere until I slide it. Now another way they use this Prusik knot is if I wanted to make this into a little loop, a smaller loop, let's see, I just kind of cross this over here. Give me a little quick overhand nut right there. Now, technically, I can stand on this rope, and if I'm climbing, it will move me up, and then when I step on this, I can reach for my next point 
then I can loosen it and this makes a little foothold. So if this rope was vertical, my foot would be in here and I could stand on this rope and it would give me a spot to spot. If I wanted to have one of these tied on my D-ring, I could keep it loose, sliding down to the point I wanted to stop. Once I stopped, tighten up my prusik, and then I have a standing point I can put my foot in and literally stand up and I'm not gonna go any down any further. That'll free up my foot, I can do one hand, then I can work my gun with one hand. Um, so we did the water knot, prusik knot, uh, we haven't done a safety knot. So let's talk about a safety knot. I'm not a huge guy on a safety knot, but they're kind of, uh, I guess it's good to know them. So we're gonna take our Prusik knot off. Untie all this. Now let's say I tie a bowling knot. So this is your bowling. Again, you want to be able to visually check it. It's got the loop on the top. The inside rope should come to the inside of your loop, the loose rope, and that's your bowling knot. Very common, very useful, very tight. Doesn't slip normally. But let's say for some reason the rope's wet or I don't trust it or I just want a little extra safety piece. Your safety knot always goes on the end of your rope past your knot. So I'm gonna tie a safety knot on this bowling, but I need a little bit longer room to work with. So we're going to make this bowling knot with a little bit more room so I have a working in. So I have my bowling, but I have a, a long end that I can do a safety knot on. Now, your normal safety knot is just going to be an overhand knot. People will come down here and they'll just go around and come straight down and just put that knot right there. And that's basically an overhand knot. Now ideally you want this knot close to your other knot. And the theory behind it is if this starts slipping, this knot will slide up there and help bind and lock this knot up. So that, that's called a safety knot. Some people require it uh, if you're doing for government or something where OSHA is involved or some sanction to where they're going to get sued or they have insurance. They're going to probably want safety knots required or used. When you're learning knots, they usually require you to learn safety knots so you know how to do it. Uh, it's a little extra piece. It takes a little bit extra rope. If you're short on rope, you may not have this extra rope to do it. Now that's one safety knot. Again, I'll do it real quick again. Let me see what kind of time we're on here. I am at 18 already. All right. So that's, that's a simple safety knot. I'll do it one more time. Basically, it's hanging down here. If you just go kind of over the rope, make you a little loop there, you're going to come over and go straight down. Basically, it's an overhand knot, a simple overhand knot on your rope. Then you're going to tighten it up. And again, you want it as close to this as possible so there's less room. If this knot slips now, it's going to take a while for that knot to ride up there. So if it's closer, it just stops it. Now that's the simple safety knot. The one we used to use in the military and when I was teaching repelling, I'm not giving you any food. So when I, this is, this is the safety knot I used and I'm not even sure what it's called, but I just kind of cut it like a modified figure eight. Basically I go over and instead of coming straight down and do one, I'm going to do an extra loop and it makes an X right here on this rope. And when I do this extra loop, kind of looks like a figure eight there. When I do this extra loop, I just come straight down through that X. And then I finish this knot here. And that's also a good connecting knot to connect two ropes. And I'll show you that in a second. So this is my safety knot, a little bit bulkier, gives me two loops instead of one, and it's a lot more secure. Um, again, is it overkill? Maybe, but you know, if you're going off a 600 foot drop or 1,000 yard, whatever you're going down, you, it's nice to know that you have extra safety things up top. I trust the bowling, the bowling's a good knot. This is an extra little safety thing. I'll do that one more time. 
Again, the first simple safety knot, I'm just coming over, I'm going straight down to an overhand knot. Okay? I don't know if you saw that. I'll back up one more because I'm not sure I was in there. Again, safety line, come over, come straight down that loop, you got your safety knot. Now that's there, that's the simple one. Mine, instead of coming over and down, I do one more loop, and then where this thing crosses over right here, I come straight down the middle of it. And maybe somebody knows what this knot is. It's used to connect two ropes. And then this is the knot that I use for safety. Um, and if you really want to get paranoid for all the crazy safety people, you could put my double safety knot up top. So now I have my knot there. And then <laughs> I'll put a little single safety knot there. <laughs> So now we really have a knot. Again, all these knots are modified. You can do what you want. Uh, this is a single safety knot. This is what I call basically my double safety knot. This is the bowlin. I can do this on any knot that I tie that I want to have a safety knot. Now I'll do a quick one on how to connect either two pieces of rope that you want to connect together or you can use this to connect one piece of rope to make a loop. So. We take our rope here, we have two pieces of rope, so I'm going to do my double safety knot here, so that's my safety knot there and it slides up and down. Then I'm going to take the other loose end and I'm going to do a safety knot on it that comes straight down the middle of that X. And now there's a safety knot, and when you pull these two safety knots together, they lock and bind. And it makes a very strong point to connect two ropes together. And they don't come apart. And then if you really want to get paranoid, you can do a safety knot here. <laughs> on this one, and then on this one. And I didn't leave enough room. But you get the, you get, you get the, the message. Um, and again, to take this apart, you would pull in these two loose ends and it would divide the rope and then you would just untie each of those knots and once you tie them back on when you pull on the rope I'm getting hooked on my little horse head here you pull on the rope and they go together and these two aren't going to come apart that's a good knot uh, I thought I was going to show another knot oh yeah that's more of a a cowboy horse knot this is a kind of a modification of a slipping safety knot um, if you're tying a a lariat or you need to tie a rope real quick for that you don't want to slip and you want to make a loop in a knot what you do is you just do a little slip knot here everybody knows how to do a slip knot right so there's my slip knot the only problem with a slip knot is it slips well if I don't want it to slip I get my knot here, I do that little safety knot, and now when it slips, it locks and it becomes a solid loop. And if you do this small on a small rope, this can become your lariat to throw and rope a horse or cattle or whatever you need to be roping. But uh, that's a good little simple knot anytime you want a quick little loop on something, is basically you do a slip knot. So you do a slip knot, and then once you have the slip knot, you do a little loop with the moving part, the part that moves up and down that slips, then you just do a little overhand knot over that. And then you let it slip to tighten, and it should lay flat, and then that gives you a good little loop. So. We went over the uh, Prusik knot, went over the water knot for connecting two uh, ribbons. Tell happened that ribbon. The water knot, you follow and you trace two knots. Uh, 
Didn't go a lot into uh, repelling. If you have a rope here and I want to repel and I want to hook in a D-ring, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. I could just hook into this rope, but that's going to give me a lot of leeway. I could hook into my Prusik knot. Then, so that's going to lock me in case I'm worried about sliding. Um, I could take my loop with my water knot, loop that over the rope or my tie point, hook through there, and now I'm ready to repel. Hooking up to a figure eight. A lot of people have figures eight. They don't necessarily use them or hook them up right. The best way to hook up for a figure eight is when you have a loop, you just go through the big hole, then you loop around to a little hole, and it makes that locking. Then you hook your D-ring in, and then that, that's your figure, kind of a figure eight on a figure eight there. Just a little loop that slides. And uh, I'm willing that there on the uh, different type of knots. So hopefully that helps. Got this, got the square knot right there. Got the Prusik knot. Uh, got the locking safety knots. Did the bowling a few times. Um, quite a few knots. Hopefully that helps. I'm at 26 minutes, and I guess we'll end that there.